we present Frida Jackson as Dr. Joe in the play by Joan Morgan with Gladys Young and Ivan Brandt in the cast. Hello, this is Dr. Beresford's house. No, there's no surgery on Saturday evenings. This is Mrs. Beresford. Oh, how are you, Miss Johnson? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. My husband's out on his round at the moment. No, I'm afraid father's out too. I, <laughs> secretary, housekeeper and general factotum these days. Away. Not much chance of that for GP's wives. We are hoping to snatch a few days at the sea in the school holidays, but the best of the summer will be over by then. Yes, I'll give him your message as soon as he comes in. Goodbye. Oh, dear, who can that be? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Are either of the doctors at home? I'm afraid not. Uh, is it uh, Mrs. Marlowe or Mrs. Beresford? Mrs. Beresford. Well, I must introduce myself. My name's Father Gill. Oh, do come in, Mrs. Father Gill. Thank you. I'm, uh... I'm your new rector's wife. Indeed. Or as our curate calls me, the rector's new wife. Ha <laughs> ha, that made us laugh. Poor darling Ned's got his faults, but I don't think Bigamy's one of them. <laughs> oh, do excuse me, I know I'm a scarecrow. I've been trying to clean out the kennels most of the afternoon. You must be tired. Uh, do sit down. Thank you so much. What sort of a dog have you got? Cocker Spaniel. Just got a first litter. Sired by a champion, starfish of wear. Really? Ned uh, jibbed a bit at the stud fees, but I told him they've got to be faced. Unless you want me to sell the puppies on the pavement in Oxford Street. Uh, as it is, I ought to get ten guineas for the dogs and eight for the bitches. Let's see. Uh, three at ten and four at eight. Uh, what do you make it, Mrs. Beresford? Sixty-two. Marvellous. <laughs> I never get to add. Sixty-two. <laughs> More than they put in the plate in a year at our last place. Uh, do tell me. How do you think we're going to get on with people here? The Canon James was very happy. Then, of course, he was so beloved. Oh. Oh, well, my Ned's got charm, bags of it. The Canon was here so many years. He married me, you know, and baptised my son. You lived here all your life? Yes, in this house. I knew it. The moment I came into this room, I said to myself, it's got something. Stability. Is that the word? Very little's been changed, certainly, since Mother died nearly ten years ago. You an only child? No, I've got a sister, Jo. She lives abroad. Oh. I say, what a lovely garden you've got. No one would expect it in the middle of the town. My husband's worked very hard on it. There used to be a big cedar in the middle of the lawn. We had to have it down. I bet that broke your heart. Well, it was making the house so dark. Ah, well, you were right then. This is a sunny room, isn't it? Too sunny. Everything fades so. Excuse me. Hello, doctor's house. No, there's no surgery on Saturday evenings. Monday to Friday, 9 to 9.30 and 6.30 to 7.30. Goodbye. I'm so sorry. This happens all day long. Must be a grind being a GP these days. It is rather a strain on my husband. He's got over 2,000 patients, you know. Such a scattered practice, too. Outlying farms and cottages. He's got a partner, though, surely. My father... But he only sees his private patients. He says he's too old to join the health service. He's had this practice for nearly 40 years. He took my husband into partnership when we married. What a dear your father is. I met him the other night, you know. So he told me. You should have seen him just now. Three caps on his head, four sweaters around his neck, having the time of his life, bless him. Not playing cricket. Umpiring. In this hot sun. Oh, well, you know the old song, little what you fancy does you good. Which reminds me, uh, do you like mushrooms? Well, uh, we I have brought a... you a few. My kids were out at the crack of dawn, picking them. The glebe simply mouldy with them. One of the compensations of a country life. Do you think you're going to be happy here, Mrs. Fothergill? Well, I suppose we shall adjust ourselves in time. Of course, it'll never be a patch on East Ham. Did you like it there? Loved it. You should have seen my youth club. Kept the boys out of clink and the girls off the street. Really? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ten years as the wife of a sporting parson in Dockland are going to take a bit of shaking off. How is your husband going to like it, do you think? Not much to get his teeth into. As he says, all of you people here will go to heaven automatically. Oh, oh, I say. Am I going to offend people? I think you'll find us quite broad-minded, even though we do live 40 miles from London. Ah, that's good. I must fly. I've got to eye on the old boy's surplus for matins. Look, um, uh, can one of the doctors come and have a look at my Keith? I, I think it's measles. Measles? Are you sure? Well, I can't think of anything else that'll make him look such a fright. And uh, unless, um, I suppose it, it couldn't be mushrooms. Well, has he eaten any? 
Bless you, yes, we've all had them. Four meals a day for the last week. We're sick of them. <laughs> uh, no, do come and see us as soon as I'm straight. Yes, thanks. I'd like to. I haven't had time to count the rooms yet, let alone furnish them. Well, it must be an awful job. Hello, I say, don't run away, Mrs. Fothergill. Oh, this is a nice surprise, Dr. Marlowe. Uh, Mrs. Fothergill wants one of you to see her little boy, Father. Oh, right away? Of course not. You're much too hot and tired. Oh, but if you're worried, I'm Bless you, go. I never worry. We've all got nine lives in our family. Not, but we've already lost eight of them in Dockland. <laughs> well, uh, cheerio, Doctor. I'll see you uh, out. Goodbye, Mrs. Fothergill. One of us will drop around presently. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Mrs. Um, Fothergill. Okay, anybody want me? Yes. Well, can't it wait? I want to get a bath before dinner. You've to be careful. You're very overheated. You don't want to get a chill. My dear Claire, I haven't caught a chill since I woke up in the snow one New Year's Day 40 years ago. Now, who wants me so urgently? Well, several people have telephoned. I do think you might arrange to be at home while Alan's out in his rounds, hmm? instead of exhausting yourself rushing about with a lot of men half your age. <laughs> Umpires do not rush about. And most of them are about a third of my age. For the daughter and wife of a doctor, you've got a very inexact mind. Now then, where are all these messages? On the pad. Oh, I can't read a thing. Oh, isn't my writing clear? Oh, it's not the writing, it's this dim religious light. Oh, father, you know I draw the blind to save the carpet. It'll fade in the sun. When you've lived as long as I have, you'll learn that the carpets are easier to come by in England than God's good sunshine. Sun. You don't know what sun is. Now at the Cape... That's where you want to go for sunlight. Transforms everything. I remember one day aboard the old Conway Castle in Table Bay. Yes, you've told me, dear. Have you seen anything of Jimmy? Why, isn't he home yet? No. Oh, I expect the match went on longer than usual. Oh, dear. Don't fuss, Claire. Don't fuss. Miss Johnson. Oh, she's Alan's pigeon, if not his turtle dove. <laughs> and who's this? Mrs. Piggott? Oh, don't tell me that rich old hypochondriac is back from Leamington already. Did you send her there? <laughs> I must send her further afield next time. <laughs> uh, Peebles. No, 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 further, further north. I should prescribe Aberdeen. <laughs> you are incorrigible, <laughs> Not incorrigible, my dear. Old and tired. All the rest are Allens. Poor young fellow, working his guts out at 17 bob a knob, while I get a blissfully diminishing number of private patients at half a guinea a visit. <laughs> uh, is he back? Yet, no, he way? had to go out to Hill Farm, an accident of some sort. Uh, Father, if you're going to bath before dinner... Oh, how's the war, Claire? Is it hot? Well, it should be. I riddled the boiler an hour ago. Oh, if you knew how many things I've had to do Mom! today. Mom! In here, Jimmy. The hooligans, they make them at school. Grandpa! Fifty? No. Oh, I say, Claire, isn't this wonderful? Uh, Jim, dear, shut 50. the door. Sorry, Mum. Now, what were you saying? I made fifty runs. Knocked it up in under three hours. I hit a six off Brown's first googly. You should have seen his face. <laughs> Jack says I broke a tile on the pavilion roof. But Mr Castle says I won't have to pay for it. So that's why you're so late. I was getting quite worried. Peter's dad gave us an orgy at the rope walk. I say, Mum, isn't the rope walk luscious? We have fruit salad and ice cream and meringue Jimmy, and... Jimmy, Jimmy, you mustn't get so excited. But, Mum, you don't seem to understand. I made 50 runs. Yes, dear, I know. But Good still... Lord, girl, it's a great day in a young man's life, his first half century. Congratulations, Jim. Heartiest congratulations. Thank you, sir. Mum doesn't seem to understand. Oh, these I... women, they don't know anything about sport, do they? Is that all it is? Of course. Sport's a man's world. I Jim. know, but... You are pleased, Mum? Yes, dear, very pleased. Your father will be too, I'm sure, but... But what, Mum? Well, games are not everything. Now, where shall we... They are to Claire? this boy just for this moment, Claire. God knows we none of us get so many times we can afford to have them shine taken off them for us. Father, I'm only thinking about his health. Well, uh, this is the first I've ever heard of cricket being bad for a boy's health. Not cricket, the excitement. Jim's very highly strung. No more than you make him. I it would be my fault... Just because I try to calm the boy down. Oh, it. leave the kid alone. There's a good girl. Not when he's in this state. What have you done with the thermometer? The what? I left it in here yesterday, in the right-hand drawer. But what do you want a thermometer for? Well, look how flush Jim is. So would you be if you had been racing about in the sun and stuffing yourself with fruit salad and ice cream? And meringues. Oh, here it is. Did you have it? Probably. I've mislaid my own. What did you have it for? Oh, the Marshall baby. Mumps. Mumps? Good heavens. Uh, did you remember to sterilise it? Oh, I'm sure he didn't. I'll have to do it later. Jimmy? Yes? 
You mustn't think I'm not pleased about your runs. Well, you don't, do you, dear? Well, you didn't sound very interested. Interested? Oh, I wonder if you realise how much I worry about you. You know, you're not very strong. Oh, rot. Oh, you've got a lot of nervous energy, yes, as I have. But I know to my cost how much it takes out of one being neurotic. But you're old. Old? Well, not exactly old, but... Oh, you know what I mean. I suppose I do seem old to you. (sighs) All the worry. You shouldn't fuss so, Mum. Fuss? Well, about my health, for instance. I don't want the chaps at school to think I'm a kid. You're only 12. In four or five years' time, I should be old enough to get a job on a ship. A ship? Why a ship? I shall have to do something. Well, there are plenty of things for you to do at home. Oh, Mum, not here in Brandon. Why not in Brandon? It's good enough for your father and your grandfather. I don't believe Grandpa's ever really liked living here. Oh, how ridiculous. He hasn't been out of England for over 40 years. Not because he hasn't wanted to. So that's it. He's been filling your head with his traveller's tales. They're jolly good tales. Mm, The first time you hear them. But what's the use of thinking about places you'll never see? How do you know I'll never see them, Mum? He did. That's different. He went as a ship's doctor. On the Conway Castle. Oh, don't you start talking about the Conway Castle. But wouldn't you like to travel, Mum? Whether I do or not is beside the point. I shall never be able to. Why not? I'm tied to the house. I'm sure it must be very nice to get about the face of the earth with no responsibility. You mean like Aunt Jo? Does Grandpa talk to you about your aunt? Yes, whenever he's had a letter. If she's been to a place he knows, for instance. Only then. More or less. Why? Oh, I just wonder. Does uh, your father ever mention her? Dad? No. Anyone at home? Oh, good, here is Dad. Dad, Dad! Hello, Jim, my boy. I see you look very excited. Come on in, Dad. You'll never believe what's happened. Happened about what? Oh, the great match. How did it go? Guess. You made a duck? No. Uh, your side was all out for 30. No. Oh, come on, tell us the worst. I made 50. Nonsense. I did, Dad. Oh, you're pulling my leg. I'm not. Ask Mum. It's quite true, Ellen. You should have seen the state of excitement he was in. I don't wonder. They had to give me a sedative when I scored my first dried black heath. Oh, Dad. <laughs> well, well. Tell me, son, between ourselves, was the bowling very bad? Oh, Dad, you are a kidder. <laughs> Anybody want the bathroom? Jim's coming up. Oh, must I, Mum? A lukewarm bath is what you need to take the stiffness off. But I'm not stiff. You will be tomorrow. And mind, not too hot. 70 degrees at the most. Oh, right I won't be long, Dad. <laughs> All right. You're very late, aren't you, Ellen? Well, I ran into You're a block... You're tired. Oh, I'm all right. You mustn't let them make too many calls on you. This accident today. Now, is that anything serious or urgent? Fatal, probably. A woodman fell 50 feet from a tree he was lopping. Fractured skull. They're operating on him tonight at the county hospital. I see. Any messages? Several. Phone's been going all the time. Any callers? Mrs. Fothergill. Oh, yes. What's she like? Rather fun, I hear. Fun? (laughs) Well, the old boy said she was. He met her at some sizemen's corral at the church hall the other night. I think she's one of the most vulgar women I've ever met. I'm only glad Jimmy wasn't here. <laughs> no wonder your father thought she was fun. <laughs> oh, I've no doubt you find her amusing, too. I expect the seamen and Steve Dawes loved her. No, well, they certainly loved her husband, if that's anything to go by. What do you know about it? Well, apparently, he was quite a figure in the East End. Really? Isn't it a little odd, then, that he's had to leave? Not in the least. Another London winter would have finished him. Oh, I didn't know. No, of course you didn't. Well, she wants you to go round to the rectory. Her boy's got measles. At least that's what she says it is. Alan? Yes? Do I look old sometimes? Of course not. You know, what I mean is, do I seem old? <laughs> What's happened? Don't tell me some old gentleman's offered you his seat in the bus. I'm not joking. Look at me. Well? Huh? What's behind all this nonsense? Jimmy. He thinks I'm old. Well, so you are to that infant. Lord, I expect he looks on me as a hoary old veteran who can remember seeing Jack Hobbs. Oh, how can I make you understand? Oh, you're so shallow. Doesn't it make things easier? For you, perhaps. Oh, yes, it's a man's world. Don't laugh at me. Now, do I look as though I'm laughing? I don't know why you should be so bitter. I'm not in the least bitter. I've got any number of blessings to count. What you really mean is I have. Well, let's say we both have. Health. Family, affection, an adequate income. What more can we ask? Then why aren't you more contented? I? Yes. Runs through everything you say. 
even a few minutes ago, it was written all over your face, your frustration. Oh, well, what about? Because the surgeon at the county hospital is going to operate on that man and not you. Well, I could have performed the operation certainly as competently as Rogers anyway. So I was right. You've never really settled down to being a GP, have you? No, oh, that's absurd. You can't deny you'd have liked to specialise. <laughs> I admit I would have liked to have gone further in my profession, but... Well, it just wasn't a B. You see, I was right. Oh, Claire. Why must you create situations where none exist? It's always the same. These orgies of introspection, boring into my mind until you've stripped me of the only privacy there is in marriage. The privacy of my own thoughts. You know, I, sometimes I wonder what it is you want. You? But, darling, you've got me, haven't you? But have I? Have I, Alan? That's what frightens me. Even when you're at my side, I know you're not with me. I lie awake in the night, hour after hour, and I think this is loneliness. This is loneliness. Now, I'm not going to listen to any more of this nonsense. Very few women in the world are less lonely than you are. You're surrounded by your family every hour of the day. Yes. Yes, I suppose I do put too much on marriage and my home. I can't help it. It's the only way I'm made. I've never wanted anything outside. You're my life, you and Jimmy. Well, then that's all right, then. Here we all are, under one roof. Nothing touches you. Ah, there you are. Well, I'm bathed, cold, and in my right mind. All I want now is my pipe. And what about a little music, Al? All right. I'll see what's on the radio. And we bring to you some of the interesting people who come by land, sea, and air to be in town tonight. Our first guest tonight has just arrived by air from Nigeria. It's very rarely that a woman is chosen to represent her country in an international organization. And we are particularly happy to welcome to the studio the British delegate to the World Council on Tropical Diseases, Dr. Joanna Marlowe. Uh, I, I, I say, listen, everybody. It's our joke. Shh, shh. Am I right in saying that you're the first woman ever to be appointed to this organization. Why, I didn't know I she was in, so, yes. in England, even. Have you any explanation to offer? Uh, apart, of course, from your outstanding experience in tropical medicine. This job above everything calls for complete mobility. Oh, that's right. The fact her. that I've got no ties and can take off from any corner of the globe at a moment's notice didn't tip the scale. You say you've got no ties, Dr. Marlowe. Does that mean you've got no relatives in this country? No, no. I've got a father and a sister. I can hardly wait to see them after all this time. Is it a long time since you were last in England? Nearly 15 years. Really? Why is that? I never seemed to get sent anywhere within 3,000 miles of home. How did you come to take up tropical medicine? Quite by chance. Just after the war, I, I happened to be in Lobito on the West African coast. I'd qualified shortly before I left home. I managed to get a job as a ship's doctor on a freighter. It was the toughest job I ever tackled. And... Uh, what exactly are your plans now? I've got to be in Delhi for a meeting of the World Health Organization early next month. Then I... Well, till then, I think I shall stay at home, if they'll have me. A case for the fatted calf, I should think. By <laughs> Jove, I should think well, so, Well, thank Joe. you so much for coming here. Uh, Dr. Joe, that is right, isn't it? Uh, yes, quite. You see, the natives can pronounce it whatever tribe they belong to. Uh, good night. Good night, and welcome home. Joe... Joe, oh, back in England at last. It was typical of her not to let us know. Yes, she always had a sense of drama. I can't get over it. Still the same old Joe. You know, I, 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 I don't know her voice anywhere. I wonder what she looks like after all this time. Much the same, I expect. I can't get over Joe coming home as a VIP. Is she one? Well, so it appears. Uh, mind your ash on the carpet, Alan. Oh, sorry. Well, it's no good my sitting here. I wish we knew what time to expect her. I shall have to get the guest room ready and think what I can do about food. Oh, you'll manage all right, Cal. Hmm. It won't exactly be the fatted calf. <laughs> Joe won't mind. Well, I shall. May not worry you, but it worries me not to be able to put up a better show after all these years. I shan't even have the daily tomorrow. <clears throat> no, I'll take it. 
Hello? Brandon 25. Dr. Marlowe here. Uh, Joe! Joe! We, we've just been listening to you on the air. Well, of course, you silly girl. We're all waiting with our fingers crossed. Yeah, quick as you can. Come by road. Oh, good, good. Well, the sooner I get off the line, the sooner you'll be here. Goodbye, bless you. <laughs> she's leaving at once. With any luck, she ought to be here by nine. I'm glad she's given us a little warning. Oh, it'll be wonderful to see her again after all this time. How long is it exactly? August 1946. The 11th of August. Good Lord, Claire. How on earth do you remember the exact date? It's not one I'm likely to forget, darling. Surely you remember... It was the night we got engaged. Go on, Grandpa. Tell me some more about Aunt Jo. She'll be here soon. Uh, well, Jim, I, uh, I don't know how much more there is to tell you. you. You've read her letters, a lot about the place she's in, not much about what she's doing there. It's only been from odd paragraphs in medical journals that I found out what an authority she's made herself in tropical medicine. Was that what she always wanted to do? No. Funnily enough, it was what I wanted to do when I was a young man. Joe's done the job I meant to do in Africa. I loved it, you know. Africa. Did you, Grandpa? Yes. The dreams we have when we're young. I was going to devote my life to the fight against the endemic diseases of the tropics. What's that? Oh, sleeping sickness, yours, yellow fever. Uh, I even got as far as putting in for a post at the hospital in Lagos. And they'd have had me, too. What went wrong, Grandpa? I got married, if you call that going wrong. <laughs> Didn't you mind giving it up? We always mind relinquishing our dreams. Yes, yes, I mind it all right. I remember thinking this town was a very small pond indeed when I first came here. Your father did, too. Still does. Dad? Well, I've made the table look as festive as I can. There's not much in the way of a salad, but I've opened one of my bottles of apricots. Well, last year's, didn't it explode? My fruit never explodes. Oh. I wish I'd known in time to get some cream. You haven't opened the claret for me yet, Dad. All in good time, Maria. All in good time. She may be here in any minute. I do think you might try to make some contribution and not leave it all to me. There's Ellen out again, and I'm left with everything to do. Prepare her room, do the table, try to produce a decent meal. And all you do is just sit there with the chair cover rucked up. I shall contribute a warm heart. That's all that matters. I shall remind you of that the next time I let the boiler go out. Aren't you excited, Mum? I'm afraid I've had too much to do to think about it. That you, Alan? Yes. I don't know what I should have done if you'd been much later. What kept you? Well, I don't think I gave them any more. You went to the rectory? Yes. Oh, what was the matter with the boy? Nettle rash. Nettle rash? Thank goodness I didn't make any mushroom soup. Now, where's my work basket? Oh, Claire, can't the mending wait? Why? Well, it doesn't look very festive. Joe would be the last person to expect me to sit with my hands in my lap. Oh, I think I'll go and have a look at that claret. I see, Dad. Did you like Aunt Jo? Oh, very much to him. Was she a smasher? <laughs> well, that wasn't the word we used in those days. What was she like? Well, young, very young and restless, full of plans and ideas. You never know what she was going to do next. She must be exciting. Oh, yes, Jim. Jo's exciting, all right. You don't look particularly tidy, Alan. Do go and change. Oh, surely it's only in the jungle that they dress for dinner. Oh, well. I'll change, if you say so. You look jolly nice, Mum. Do I, dear? That dress is pretty. It is, isn't it? I wonder if Aunt Jo would recognise you in the street. I expect so. Have you ever sent her a photo? Oh, don't you remember? Oh, no, perhaps you were too young. Those of us all on the beach at Cromer. Oh, heavens, here she is. She's here. I say, Joe's come. Here, here. Oh, get out of the way. Oh, look out there. I've stumped over the road. Now, let's put the lights on. But she is here. It's her, Mum. It's on Joe. Here, let me go. No, I will. No, no, no. Come no, no. on, Grandpa. Oh, don't you get excited, boy. Don't get excited. Keep calm. Keep calm. Now, you let the girls get it over but first. But can't we just go and help no, no, her no, with no, the bags? I'll see you. Wonderful to see you. Hey, Joe. Joe, oh. I can't get over it. Oh, Dad. 
Oh, now, Dan, don't, don't make me cry. Oh, Robert, put those parcels down somewhere. Yes. Anywhere. Claire. Claire, it was barbaric of me not to let you know, but I, I only knew myself 48 hours ago. It's been chaos ever since. Oh, Robert, you'd like to be getting back, wouldn't you? If you're sure you won't be wanting me anymore tonight. No, no, I shan't be wanting you for days. You've only to tell you for any quarter. Yes, I know, I've got the number. Well, thanks for getting me here so quickly. You know, I really don't think I could have stood another ten minutes. Thank you, madam. It's been a pleasure. Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. Oh. Oh, this is never little Jimmy. How do you do, Aunt Jo? I expect he's grown since the snapshot we sent Grown? You. Well, it's quite incredible. And this strapping young man is the person I brought in Nora's Ark. Oh, 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 Claire, we are growing up. I said, look at the evidence. Yes. Well, you, you've not changed much, Joe. Are you glad to be home, Joe? Oh, Claire, I can't tell you how glad. Do you believe that two days ago I was in Carno? Where's Carno? Oh, it's in northern Nigeria. The Clapham a... Junction of West Africa. <laughs> well, I was on my way to Johannesburg, and at the last minute the conference was cancelled, and I got three weeks free. Marvellous, I thought. England. I caught the plane with ten minutes to spare. Good heavens. Oh... I still can't believe it. I, I'm not dreaming, am I? No, Joe, you're not. It's fantastic. Nothing's changed. The same prize rose bow. Yes. The same roses out of the garden. Same old watercolours. Oh, Claire, not the same loose covers. Yes, just the same. And with all that's happened in the world. Well, if you wanted to look for reassurance, this room would give it to you. You'll never know how much I've thought about it. Now, I've huddled under my mosquito net and tried to imagine I was sitting out under the cedar tree in the garden. Oh, dear. Now, that cedar tree began to be almost an obsession with me. I used it as a sort of magic whenever I had a dose of fever. I'm sure it helped. I must just have a look at it. Oh. No. Oh, no. We had to have it done. But why? Well, it made the kitchen so dark. Sorry, Joe. Oh, well. Well, there won't be anything to bring my temperature down. What did you get, Joe? Malaria? Oh, yes, mild attacks. A few days and I'm as right as rain again. It must be rotten while it lasts. Oh, morbid as hell. Let's skip that. You look well, Claire. Hmm, considering. Considering what? Well, England isn't exactly a housewife's paradise nowadays. Poor old Claire. Wish I could have brought you one or two of my servants. One or two? Yeah, it sounds very grand, doesn't it? It isn't really, you know. Oh, I expect you still exaggerate. You don't need to in my part of the world. Well, the wildest tales are true, dear lass. Ah. <laughs> well, my dear, you must be longing for a meal. You never waited dinner for me. Well, it's only cold, I'm afraid. If I'd known you were coming, I'd have... Oh, don't be so silly, Claire. Oh, here, Jim. We must just look at a few of the things I've brought back. Oh, aren't you ever tired? No, not as long as I keep the engine running. Here. Claire, you, you have those flowers. They're Nigerian orchids. Oh, what beautiful things. They kept them on the ice in the plane, but I'm afraid they look a bit the worse for wear now. <laughs> now. Ah. Yes, Claire, I think this is yours. Yes. Here you are. It's a handbag. Joe. Sure. Do hope you'll like it. Oh, Mum. Oh, but it's lovely, Joe. Thank you so much. Oh, what wonderful workmanship. Oh, magnificent. Now, your turn next, Dad. Hmm? There. A leopard skin rug. Oh, Keep you warm while you're up on your arms. Oh, 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 well, this certainly will impress Mrs. Pickett. Mrs. Pickett? Who's Mrs. Pickett? Father's only patient. Only pay. Oh, dear. Has it come down to that? Very nearly, my dear. Very nearly. <laughs> Alan! Hello, Joe. Hello, Alan. She's a smash, all right, isn't she, Dad? She... Yes, she certainly is. Oh, we've only just started on the parcels, Alan. You haven't missed much. Now, Jim was the real problem... I know you're far too old for such childish things now, Jim, but this will... Well, it is a bit different, perhaps. It's... Thank you, Aunt Jo. It's a sort of Noah's Ark. I say. I say. <laughs> the carving's superb. Isn't he luscious? Luscious? What a word for a rhino. <laughs> Have you seen any? A few. Do they charge? Well, they didn't charge me. I drove too fast. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of a monkey is this? It's a gorilla. I watched him being carved. Where? 
wettest village in all Nigeria. And it can rain there, can't mm. it? <laughs> Have you ever been to Nigeria, Grandpa? No, no, no. The nearest I ever got was Walvis Bay. Anchored among the dead fish? Oh, so it hasn't changed. Mm. Tell me, Joe, what are things like out there nowadays? Oh, well, <laughs> you still pray to the gods to send you more vaccines, more cell phones, and please, Lord, more insecticides. <laughs> TV where there's no DDT. That's right. <laughs> Oh, Dad, I do wish I'd had you out there. Uh, not as much as I do, Joe. Aunt Joe? Hmm? What sort of an animal is this? She me. Aunt Joe? Oh, that's an antelope. Darling, I could have told you that if you'd asked me. But Aunt Joe's seen them, Mum. But you mustn't interrupt her when she's talking to someone else. I don't mind. You ask all the questions you like, Jim. <laughs> you little know what you've let yourself in for. Oh, well, don't worry, Alan. Joe's always liked an audience. You haven't asked a thing, Mum. Your mother never suffered from wanderlust, Jim. Well, there hasn't been much time for idle dreaming. Oh, poor old Claire wants her dinner. We all do. Oh, just a minute. We can't go till Alan's had his present. My present? Of course. Dad! Here you are. Oh, thank you, Joe, for thinking of me. Look at it. What is it, Dad? A Negro's head. Oh, oh charming. Oh, n- it can't be a Benin bronze. Benin, yes. Oh, it's not an old one, I'm afraid. They won't let those out of the country now. Oh, I'm thrilled with it, Joe. Thank you. I thought you could have it on your desk. You mean to suggest I'll fall back on witch doctoring when the pharmacopoeia fails me? Oh, so you still have your little academic joke? <laughs> no, not very often these days. <laughs> oh, no, Alan doesn't find being a country GP an academic joke. <laughs> That's something I shall never get used to. Alan still being a GP. But, Joe, uh, when Father took him into partnership... Oh, I know all about that. But I never for a minute thought he'd stick it. But then you never knew how that came about. Came about? Uh, we don't want to go into all that old stuff now, Claire. It's new to Joe. It can't possibly matter one way or another after all these years, Claire. Oh, but it does. Joe, you remember the night Ellen and I got engaged and you dashed off to London on the last train? Uh, yes, I remember. After you'd gone, oh, Claire, Father please. called us into the consulting room and... I wonder if you could recall what you said, Dad. Well, if I can't, I have no doubt that you can. The exact words. He said, I always knew you'd marry one of my daughters. As it's Claire you've chosen, I shall be happy to take you into partnership. More than happy. That was the proudest moment of my life, Joe. And now, do let's have dinner. I'm sure we're all ready for it. Oh, you were right about the rain, Claire. There's been quite a bit in the night. Funny, I never heard a thing. Perhaps you weren't lying awake. Ah, yes, nice. Oh, have you been out in the garden? Yes. In those slippers? Oh, don't you worry, I didn't get my feet wet. I meant, oh, Father, look what you brought into the house. What? Where? On my carpet. Oh, my dear one, well, the, the lawn's covered with worm cast. I'm so sorry, Claire. Here, I, I'll rub it off. Not with your handkerchief. I'll do it. Oh, just when it's been cleaned so nicely. I'm so sorry, Claire. You're worse than Jimmy. Not another patient already. Good morning. Can, can I see the doctor? Will you go in the waiting room, please? Poor old Alan, that's the seventh so far, and still a quarter of an hour to surgery time. Ha <laughs> ha, me, the joys of private practice. Aunt Jo! Aunt Jo! Aunt Jo! Isn't she here? No, she's still in bed. No, she's not. I just popped my head in. Well, you shouldn't have done that. Doesn't she want any breakfast? I took hers up on a tray. Today as well? I thought that was only after her journey. She is an old lazy bones, isn't she, Mum? <laughs> well, she's used to plenty of servants. Nonsense. Joe's got the sense to keep out of the way when the work of the world's being done, unlike some of us. I wish she'd get a move on. I want to see her before I go to school. Why? I just want to. I don't suppose she'll have vanished by this evening. This evening's too late. I've got to ask her something. What? Surely you could ask me. You wouldn't know, Mother. <clears throat> well, ma- I'd better go and change these shoes of mine, I suppose. Uh, it's a quarter to nine, Jim. You'd better be off. Uh, have you got your books? In the hall. Oh, Mum, I want a pencil. Have you got a new one? Somewhere. Where did I put them? I don't know what's happened to everyone this morning. Just because there's an extra person in the house. Oh. This is the doctor's house. I'll call him. Oh, Dr. Joanna Marlowe. I'm afraid she's not down yet. Can I get her to call you back? Shall I call her? An interview? Uh, Well, if you hold on, I'll see if I can get her. Uh, Yes, get her, Jim. Aunt Jo! Telephone! I'm her sister. I? Oh, no. Just the housewife. Oh, that's a very nice tribute to us. She's coming. Oh, my sister can speak to you. She's dripping all down the stairs. Shh! No, that was my young son. Oh, dear. 
There, your poor carpets. I'm dripping all over them. So sorry. Here she is now. Thanks, Claire. Hello. Yes, speaking. I'd say, Aunt Jo. Just, just a minute, darling. You mustn't keep her. Only a sec. Those native chiefs you were telling us about, what were their names? Uh, just hold on a moment, would you? Um, the Oni of Ife and the Alafin of Oyo. Oh, thanks, Auntie. You do smell nice. Uh, Jim, you'll be late. Be careful crossing the road. All right, Mum. <laughs> so sorry about that. Oh, yes, simply heaven. I've forgotten how beautiful England is. No, nothing's changed. Well, it hasn't anyway where I am. It's almost uncanny. It's like stepping back in time. No, I don't want to do anything at all. Just lie out in a deck chair and listen to the blackbirds. Yes, I can say with confidence that we've reached a point now when not only the cure, but the control of certain diseases is within sight. Anyway, on a small scale. If we could clear the whole country of mosquito and tsetse flies, we've cleared limited areas, our job would be half done. Yes, I've just been working up at the Pasteur Institute in Dakar. Write a book? Oh, but I have already. Of course. My name on it? Well, certainly not. Official reports are always anonymous. Fascinating Frenchman in Dakar. Well, no, we're all much too much in earnest. No, nothing is further from my thoughts. Yes, yes, for publication, if you wish. No romances. Thank you. Goodbye. Morning, Joe. Hello. Oh, Alan. Didn't see you come. <laughs> oh, you're looking very dewy this mm. morning. <laughs> so are Claire's carpets, I'm afraid. <laughs> Have you ever noticed the moment you get in the bath, the phone's bound to ring? Even when you're up in the interior? Well, then it's Tom Toms. <laughs> well, I thought you'd like some more coffee. Oh, lovely. Who were you flirting with just now? Flirting? Me? Well, perhaps you can't help it. You never could. <laughs> Who was it? The Daily Pictorial. Oh, indeed. It surprised me rather. I shouldn't have thought I was their type. Well, I don't know. If they could see you at the moment, you'd get on their front page. <laughs> <laughs> Not making you late for surgery, am I? Oh, no, no. It's not time yet. Oh. Do you like being a GP? It keeps the wolf from the door? Oh, that's an odd remark. Why? Well, <laughs> the Alan Beresford, who would have been rather surprised not to have got his knighthood by the time he was 40. Mm. So much for the pipe dreams of medical students. Oh, no, not just pipe dreams. Overweening ambitions, then? No, not that either. Convictions? Yours and others. <laughs> because I talked well and knew where I was going. Most of us did that, but we didn't fool the people who really knew. Cartwright and Matheson and Sir George. Well, the experts can be wrong. No, not on solid results. Exams, paper knowledge. No, surgery is not paper knowledge, Alan. Well, surgery can be useful to a GP. I shouldn't have thought there was much scope for cranial surgery in a place like Brandon. Ah, that's where you're wrong. Only on Saturday a patient of mine fell from a tree and cracked his skull. And you're operating? Well, uh, no. As it happens, they've taken him to the county hospital. Well, there, you see. Still the same old Joe, goading us all on. You didn't need much goading in the old days. Well, a lot of water has flowed under the bridges since then, for both of us, Joe. I know. What's made you like this? Like what? Well, I thought you'd have grown more. Grown up? No, grown. In stature. <laughs> Is that cruel? No, I don't think so. Intolerant, perhaps? How? Huh. Well, you should have made more allowances for the fact that you've outstripped me. But that's the point. I ought not to have outstripped you. Good heavens, 15 years ago, I just scraped through my MB while you... Well, it was, it was all yours for the taking. What happened to you, Alan? Well, shall we say, um, life caught up with me, if you call it life. Ah, uh, you mean high hopes faint on a warm hearthstone? Oh, well, perhaps. Well, you've travelled fast enough anyway. Alone? Yes, that was obvious 15 years ago. Was it? <laughs> Lord, yes. You never let anyone so much as hold the door for you. I still don't. Yes, but they open to you, all right. The doors of the world. <laughs> How romantic you make it sound. Well, then, isn't it? That's just lovely. Isn't it, Joe? <sighs> Dakar yesterday, Delhi tomorrow. Emirs, fakirs and witch doctors flying over the jungle, forced landings in the desert. Oh, yes, it's romantic, all right. But you do love it, don't you? I mean, your work, your attainments, it must be very satisfying. Well, it's nice to feel I'm helping to relieve a minute part of the suffering of the world. Is that why you took up medicine? 
Yes. Did you tell the press that? Oh, no. They only heard about the conferences and the flowers at the airport. So the rest of it, the fame, etc. Pure cetera. accident. Why do you play down your work, Joe? Well, you can't talk to strangers about things like that. Tell me something. Hmm? How have you managed to keep the ideal so fresh? Surely that's not so very difficult. Yes, but in your work, you get suffering in the raw. Sleeping sickness, river blindness, leprosy. Here, for every case of real illness, I get a dozen, a couple of aspirin would cure. Oh, my sensibilities have got blunted till nothing touches me. Mm. So that's it. Spark has died. Oh, I don't know. Was there one? Oh, yes. Couldn't have been as powerful as I thought, though. Are you angry with me? Oh, no, not angry. A bit sad. <sighs> We've travelled such a long way since we were students together. Yes, they were good days. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Weren't we young? <laughs> Callow in the extreme. <laughs> we were all so outstanding. Never did a single year hold so many future royal oh. positions. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever run into Fatty Lomax? Fatty? Yes. Yes. Yes, well, wasn't he out in your part of the world, Lady? Of course, yes. yes. Of course he still is. I worked with him for two years. Oh, he's done a wonderful job. Good old Fatty. What's he like now? Thin. No. Yes. <laughs> he goes down to Seven Stone regularly every time he gets a go of fever. <laughs> Did you get on well with him? Oh, wonderfully. He's a great person. Well, you must have been thrown together quite a lot. When we were working up in the bush, we were the only white people for hundreds of miles. And you... Stood the strain? Well, who could quarrel with Fatty? I meant uh, he could stand the strain of being alone with you day after day. And uh, does he still play that frightful trumpet? No, no, not often. He says it charms too many snakes. <laughs> he used to think more of that trumpet than his exams. <laughs> you remember that night when we all went to the Chelsea Arts School? Oh, yes, and Fatty would climb onto the platform and play a solo. <laughs> and do you remember and... what he looked like? Oh, yes. Undressed as a cherub. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> he didn't go out for a cheap oh. success like you did, Dick Whittington, indeed. Well, I got good legs. If I hadn't had a rug, you'd have died of exposure on the drive. Oh, huh? That drive, I do remember. Do you remember stopping at that pull-up for breakfast? Yes, I remember, Joe. Oh. Every mile of the road. It all seems a long time ago, doesn't it? Well, I should have said it was only yesterday. Alan, have you seen the time? Um, oh, just on nine. I make it two minutes past. Oh, no doubt you're right. I suppose my patients are starting to make impatient noises. Yes, they are. Miss Johnson wanted to see you. Miss Johnson? If she only wants another chit for a hundred aspirin, she can come in surgery hours. Oh, these patients. Telephone ringing day and night, always streaming across the hall. Oh, mine are usually long lolling about under the palm trees. How glamorous. Oh, have you finished the coffee? Uh, yes, thanks. You must find it very dull here with us. No, oh no, Claire. Not dull. Well, not for a few days, perhaps, while the novelty lasts. You haven't got to stick it year in and year out. You do look tired, Claire, are you? You've forgotten what it's like in England nowadays. I haven't had any proper help in the house for years. Only a succession of daily women who only make more work. Well, you've kept the place up marvellously. It's not that I mind so much. It's the meals, the eternal meals. Shopping, cooking, washing up. And don't forget, I've got two men and a growing boy to feed. Mm. That's something you've never had to cope with. No. Oh, don't think I'm complaining. I'm not. No one could ask for a more devoted husband than I've had or son. Well, that's only as it should be. You've devoted yourself to them. Yes. I tremble to think what would have happened if Alan had married you. The question never arose. Let's skip it, shall we? You certainly wouldn't have been much of a homemaker. Just look at you in your dressing gown at this hour. What are you doing this morning, Claire? Well, I've got the bedrooms to do. And oh, I don't mean the chores. You can leave them to Mrs. Thing for once. Let's go and have coffee in the town. Is the rope walk still going? Yes. Then that's where we'll go. Well, I'd love to, Jo. Well, no, only I... what? It's my morning with the WBS. Oh, you haven't gone and let yourself in for that, too. Yes. Well, you can cut it out for this morning, anyway. I wonder if I could. Oh, of course you can. Oh, Claire, it'll be grand to sit in the window watching all the old cats go by. <laughs> you won't believe it, but one of my real nostalgias has been for morning coffee at the rope walk. I very rarely go now. One drops out of things. Well, you can drop in again. Ah, oh, oh, hello. What's all this? Well, I'm leading Claire from the paths of duty. Hmm? Here, wait, I've got a better idea. We'll have an escort. 
Dad, you shall take two very charming ladies out to morning coffee with cream, seeing that he's paying, don't you think, Claire? Oh, yes. I should be delighted. Oh, well, then, I'll go and get ready. <laughs> By the way, Joe, while I think of it, I, I've been meaning to ask you before, wasn't the old Conway Castle somewhere along the west coast during the war? Yes, she was used as a depot ship at Lagos. Was she? I went toward her once, and I gave her your love. You did? Mm. <laughs> How did she look? Well, just the same. Same dove-coloured paint. Is she still there? No. Any ideas where she's got to? Uh, don't tell me they sold her to the Greeks. No, no, they didn't do that. Well, she hasn't come home for refitting, I suppose. She... She wasn't worth the cost. Tell me, Joe. They took her out into the South Atlantic and... Scuttled her. Mm. <laughs> oh, you good old Conway. She was a fine ship in her day. She was fine to the end. Shall I answer? <laughs> please, please do. Hello? Oh, hello, Dr. Clark. Oh, no, I really can't face another conference before Delhi. But I haven't been home for 15 years. You know, I, I simply can't shoot off again in a week's time. <laughs> you do understand. No, no, I shan't change my mind. No. <laughs> Goodbye. Don't tell me you've refused. Never did I feel less like bearer. You ever been there? No, oddly enough, I haven't. You take it while it's going, then. Why? Joe, life has a way of revenging itself on you for missed opportunities. You don't notice it at first, perhaps not for years. And then gradually it begins to dawn on you that things are no longer there for the taking. I tell you, it's a bad moment when you realise you've got in a groove. Claire tells me you haven't been anywhere since Mother died. I never went anywhere while she was alive. Oh, now, Dad. I know, I know, talky one year, and don't know the next... Pleasant places in the company of pleasant people. A nice drive in the company of other doctors and their wives, making for a bridge after you and Claire have been put to bed. We always stayed at very nice hotels. Oh, yes. No lizards running up the walls. No cicadas to drill your nerves or Zulu tom-toms to keep you awake. No stifling days or icy nights. Everything leveled out. No heat, no cold, no dying, no living either. I never realised it meant so much to you. Neither did I, Joe. What do you mean, Dad? You brought it all back, you. Do you know, that memory was as fresh as though it had happened last week. But only the memory. Not the feel of it, the tug. You've never had frostbite, have you, Joe? No. But while you're frozen, you don't feel anything. It's when you start to thaw out, when the warmth brings you back to life. That's when the pain begins. And that's what you are, the warmth that brings frozen people back to life. <laughs> You're a dangerous woman, oh, Joe. Dad. <laughs> Hello, Alan. I didn't know you were back. Well, I've only just got in. Oh. Have you been out here all the afternoon? Yes. Reading? Most of the time. Oh, what a heavenly day like one of those long summer afternoons when we were very young. <laughs> I saw you through the window. I thought this is the first time I've ever seen Joe sitting still. Oh, dear. What's the matter? I don't know. I feel a bit shivery. Well, what do you expect? Got a bit of a headache, too. Yes, well, what do you expect when you read in sunglasses? You make me feel like a child, Alan. It must be my fault. Now, you're old enough to know better, however meagre our son may be to your standards. I love this mellow sound. And all the soft colours. That old red wall and roses and the green grass. It's all so clean and safe and known. <laughs> you talk like an exile. Exile. It's a sad little word. Oh, I shouldn't have used it, Joe, if I hadn't thought it was so wide of the mark. But is it? Oh, I know. Blackbirds in song, roses in room. Yes, it is lovely, as lovely as anything in the world, but... But you've had too many years on the roundabouts to be led away from your goal by an English garden. Don't. But don't forget the wonderful life you've made for yourself, Joe. Don't let a moment's sentiment blind you to what you've got. Oh, dear. I mean, I do feel shivery. 
I really think I must have a touch of fever. Oh, sure, you'd better go in at once. Now, come on. All right. You know, you look dazed. Do you always look like that when you're feverish? Do I look dazed? Yes, you do. You know, you'll have to be careful, Joe. Is Claire about anywhere? No, no. Women's Institute. No, what doing this time? Bottling. I didn't know there was anything to bottle at this time of the year. Jim's not back yet, is he? No, nor likely to be, for some considerable time. He was last seen guzzling in the rope walk. Oh, what it is to be 12, eh? <laughs> I'd forgotten there was anything so clear-eyed and hopeful in the world. We all know too much. Our generation? Yes. Mm. It's a kind of shock to find someone for whom everything's new. Just as though the days are too short for all the questions Jim wants to ask. All the questions he wants to ask Aunt Joe, you mean? <laughs> You've bewitched the boy. <laughs> Nonsense. He is a darling, though, Alan. I do love him, you know. Well, not just because he's... He's my son. And Claire's. Is the old boy back from his cricket? No, not yet. I expect he dozed off in the sun. Yes. I hope Mrs. Barnes gave you some tea. I didn't feel like it. Anyway, she's gone out. So they're all out? Yes. There's something rather heady about being alone in the house of a woman you still love. Alan. Joe, you don't know what it is to be under the same roof with you. I lie awake night after night thinking Joe's in the next room, just through the wall. When it's very quiet, I I almost feel I can hear you breathing. This is mad, Alan. No, it's not. It's the only sane thing I've done for 15 years. I love you, Joe. Don't. I, I can't stand any more. That word, exile, now. Alan. I thought you were so secure. Secure? Yes. Oh. I thought I was. But my sort of job, each day means starting afresh. Nothing, nothing takes an, in an inevitable course. Well, I can stand the pace all well and good. You know, this simply isn't you. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the fever. It always makes me morbid. But it, it also makes me see clearly. Clearly, this dream of a warm fireside and children at your knee. Don't you be so bitter. Well, I won't have you tormenting us both with this 11th hour repentance. What do you know about it? Nothing. No, but I do remember you as you used to be. You knew exactly where you were going, and, and that was worlds away from the rest of us. Tell me, Joe. Have you had many lovers? <laughs> Depends what you mean by lovers. Well, the word's explicit enough, surely. Well? None. Why should you try to spare my feelings? I don't spare yours. I have never had a lover, Alan. You're speaking the truth? Yes. Why haven't you? Why haven't you, Joe? I couldn't bear the thought of anyone else. Joe. Why did you marry Claire? She needed me, as you never would have done. Oh, so that was where I failed. <laughs> I've gone over it again and again, wondering where I went wrong. It was just after the war. You asked me here for the weekend, you remember? On the drive down, I told you I was thinking of putting in for service in Malaya. Yes, I know, and I said, what a marvellous way to see the world. Yes, it shook me. I, I thought you were in love with me, and suddenly, in a sentence, you seemed to be throwing me to the wolves. Well, what did you expect me to do? Weep on your shoulder and beg you to stay at home. Well, that was pretty much what did happen. Claire. And I could hardly leave her when we first married. <sighs> then she was going to have a child, and so it went on. And so it went on. Oh, God. Oh, I'm tired. I've wondered about you such a lot since you came back. I can't reconcile you with my memories. All these years I've known that I've loved you. Yet there was a moment that first evening. You were sitting there with Jim, your heads close together, and you were both laughing. Something happened to me. I I can't explain it. It was like love at first sight, that queer physical pain, half hope, half fear. You and, and my son. It's all gone into him, all the love I'm capable of. I try to keep a balance. He must be free. I've failed in so much. I, I mustn't fail in this. You're not a failure in his eyes. He worships you. 
You you think he does? I know he does. I'm glad you've got him, Alan. Something to look forward to. It's nice to sit like this, isn't it? Together. Mm. Oh, what might have been. No, Alan. No. That's one of the things we never put into words. Joe, I... I just don't know how I'm going to carry on. Oh, Lord. Twenty-five past six. Surgery. Nemesis. At 17 bob a time. Oh, Lord, I evidently forgot to leave the door on the latch. Hello, Jimmy. See you later. Hello, Aunt Jill. Well, Jim. Gosh, aren't you hot? Yes, you better not come too close. Why, is it catching? No, no. I bet Mum will think it is. Jim. You know what an old scary catch oh, is. You are a horrible child. I am, aren't I? <laughs> a horrible man. Oh, horrible man. Is that the latest? It's good, isn't it? Mm. You don't look at all like a VIP. Well, I don't feel much like one at the moment. Is Mum out? Mm, yes. Where? A uh, women's institute. Oh, blow. That means she'll be pernickety when she comes in. Why? She's always pernickety when she's been doing good work. Oh. <laughs> do you think Dad's handsome? Oh, very. So do I. I say, do you mind me calling you Joe? Oh, I love it. Why? Mum said you might be cross. Oh. She says you don't understand children and, you know, being a spinster. Oh, I never really thought of myself as a spinster. It is a funny word when you come to think of it. Mm, isn't it? Could I be a ship's doctor if I were strong enough? Strong enough? To stand the life. Well, life on a modern liner is not exactly grueling. I know, but you see, I'm not really as strong as I look. I've got a lot of neurotic energy. A lot of what? Neurotic energy. Who ever told you that? Mum. Oh, I see. I feel all right, of course. Well, of course you are all right. You're as strong as a horse. But she says now, I've got a... listen to me, Jim. I've worked amongst children of all ages and all colours... And I can tell you that I have never met a more normal, healthy boy of 12 than you in my life. So get it right out of your head at once that you're anything else. Yes, Joe. And don't get into the stupid habit of trying to make yourself interesting by talking about your ailments. Illness is not interesting. And if there's anything ever really wrong with you, tell your father or your grandfather. They'll soon know. Now, do you promise? I promise, Joe. That's good. If I did become a doctor, could I be your assistant? Oh, my goodness. By the time you're qualified, I shall be an old, old lady. You'll never be old. Oh, I shall. You won't. You're too... too glowing. I think that's the nicest thing anybody has ever said to me. Do you have to go away? Yes, dear. Do you like it here? Oh, yes. Better than abroad? Much better than abroad. Then why do you go abroad? Well, it's a very long story, and it's really not worth telling. Where did it start? Well, I suppose you might say in this room. Something happened. It doesn't really matter what. I knew I'd got to get away, that's all. So I rang up several shipping companies on that phone. The earliest sailing happened to be for the Cape. I wasn't very happy on the voyage, and when the ship called at a place called Lobito on the West African coast, I decided to stay there. Why? I think perhaps because it was so cut off from everything I'd ever known. Nothing to remind me of home. I took a room at the one hotel. The windows looked down on the flat, dusty, empty street. The sky was hard, clear blue. And the cicadas were shrilling away like a thousand electric drills. Then I saw a native sitting under one of the trees. He was covered in sores and flies. Just before sunset, I heard the ship's siren. She was leaving. I sat at the window and... and... I watched her sail out of the bay. Darkness falls very suddenly, you know, in Africa. And all her lights came on. And I watched her till she was out of sight. Carrying with her the last person who spoke a word of my language. Then... There was no sound. Weren't you frightened, Joe? Oh, very frightened. But I, I knew I had to stay because I, I knew I had a job to do. Only whenever I arrive in a strange place, I, I always remember that first night in Lobito. 
I think I've been frightened ever since. Oh, Mrs. Aitken rang you, sir. She wants you to slip over there this evening. All right, Mrs. Barnes. And this telegram came for Dr. Joe, sir. All right, I'll give it to her. Father. Uh, uh, oh, oh, yes, yes, Helen. Uh, what is it? Where's Joe? This cable's come for her. Oh, she's in the garden. Cable? Hmm? Oh, I wish they'd telephoned it through, then we'd have known what was in it. <laughs> yes, yeah, probably whistling her after Timbuktu at a moment's notice. Exactly. We could have held it back till it was too late. Hmm? <laughs> she's not looking too good, is she? She ought not to have got up so soon. Well, she says she feels better out of doors. This passion of hers for green grass, it's... It's almost as though she's storing the memory of it as a camel stores water. You mean this place? Yes. I don't quite know how to put it, but I'd have liked her to be able to think of this place as home. Home? Well, of course it's a home. Joe was born in this house as well as Claire. The timetable, the pattern, the way of life are all set by Claire. You and Jim fit into the pattern all right. Joe and I are rebels. I told the line because I'm too old and too lazy to do anything else. The most I can do is to drop ash on the carpet or, 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 or pull up one of the blinds. <laughs> Joe's the lucky one. She can take the next plane to Fiji or wherever she damn well likes. Well, it's not so simple. After all these years, she's beginning to feel the need for roots. Stable background. Yes, 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 I know. Don't let's try to fool ourselves, Alan. You mean Joe's the stranger within the gates? That's mm. not at all what I was thinking. Uh, well, I suppose we ought to give her her cable. Yes, I suppose so. Joe! Hello? Cable for you. Shall I bring it out? No, I'm coming. All right. Here you are. It's only just come. Uh, we, we, we did think of suppressing it, uh -huh. Joe. I expect I should wish you had. Uh, do you reconsider your decision not to attend Bearer Conference? Kindly cable EDCO Bearer immediately. Oh, dear. Oh, wh wh when, wh when would you have to leave? The conference opens in three days' time. Then it's out of the question. You're not up to it. You've only been out of bed a couple of days and you're tottering about like a newborn antelope. You've already refused once, refuse again. Mm. On medical advice? Most certainly. On the advice of my favourite doctor? And I'll sign the certificate too. My two favourite <laughs> doctors. <laughs> That's settled then. I continue to loaf for another ten days. That's the only advice I ever give myself. <gasps> ten days? Is that all you've got now? Well, I daren't run it any closer. I've got to be in Delhi on the 8th anyway. Oh. Well, hadn't you better put those bearer people out of their misery? I'll, uh, I'll pass the phone over. Here you are. Thanks, Alan. Oh, go on, Joe, before you change your mind. It's the last thing I'm likely to do. I want to send the cable, please. Oh, uh, Brandon 25. It's to the Endemic Diseases Control Organization, Bearer. Uh, B E I R A, Bearer, Portuguese East Africa. Yes. Regret prevented on medical grounds from attending conference. Stop. Signed, Joanna Marlowe. Yes, thank you. Oh, freedom! Splendid, Joe. Alan. <laughs> yes? Did you notice what shirt Jim was wearing this morning? No, not particularly. Why? I believe it was a clean one. Oh, well, I hope it wasn't a dirty one. You don't understand. It hadn't been aired. How do you know? Well, the laundry only came back yesterday, and with all I've had to do, I didn't have time to sort it. He must have taken it from the box himself without telling me. Oh, I shouldn't worry too much, Claire. Mm, you never do worry. It's midsummer. Summer chills can be very dangerous. Not till you get to my age. It's not as though Jim's strong. Oh, nonsense. You know he's not. I know nothing of the kind. You haven't had to nurse him through his illnesses. What illnesses? Measles and mumps. They can oh, both God be sake. very dangerous. So can crossing the road. <sighs> I suppose it's too much to hope for anything but callousness with a room full of doctors. Oh, don't worry so much, Claire. The boy's as strong as a horse. Jimmy strong? Certainly he is. I've never seen a healthier boy in my life. Perhaps I'm the best judge of that. After all, you're not a mother. No, I'm not. Uh, why don't you sit down, Joe? You look pale. Oh, I'm quite all right. I don't think there's much wrong with Joe, Father. I took a temperature myself this morning. It's down to normal. I'd still say that she looks pale. Yes, and I agree. Perhaps she ought to go back to bed, then. Well, I feel so cut off from everything up there. I've got so few days left with you all. I've never known you spend so many nights under one roof. She's quite a reformed character, isn't she? Oh, 
Father, what are all those papers on the floor? Papers. I can see that. Papers written by learned men on some of the most loathsome diseases flesh is heir to. Uh, <laughs> I suppose if I'd been a doctor, I should find that funny. Oh, don't begrudge him his little joke, Claire. You two always hang together, of course. Oh, Father, did you know you'd got the loose cover rucked up? No, I was waiting for you to tell me. There's no need to lose your temper. I think there's every need, and I've not lost my temper. Since you came into this room a few minutes ago, you've put a damper on all of us. To have done nothing but fuss about every pettifogging thing you can think of. Fuss, 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 nag, nag, nag. But by Jove, if I were your husband, I'd give you a damn good hiding now and then. Father! You've never spoken to me like this before. It's a great pity I didn't. I don't think you quite realise what you've done. Now, don't go make heavy weather of it, Claire. He was only joking. No, no, he meant it. Oh, Claire, Claire, Claire. Look, I'm so sorry. I admit I did lose my temper for a minute, but... Uh, oh, well, let's forget it. No, oh, I don't have enough to put up with as it is. I'd like to see how your temper would be if you had to cope with all I do. Well, oh, I know there's a devil of a lot to do in the home, Claire. More than enough for one woman. But on top of that, you must embark on a lot of outside activities. Every blasted voluntary thing that's going. You can easily cut those out. How can I cut them out? The doctor's wife has got to set an example. Parson's wife doesn't seem to bother. That woman. Mrs. Fothergill is not that woman. She's been quite a heroine in her time, and she's a damn good fun into the bargain. Fun? Fun, that's all you men look for. A woman can sacrifice everything to you. None of it counts. It's all very well for some women. They've got no obligations, no loyalties. They can go off to the ends of the earth with nothing but their own careers and their own pleasures to think of. How dare you, Claire? Leave Joe out of this. Oh, who can that be? Good afternoon, Mrs. Fothergill. Is anybody at home? Yes, madam. They're all in the drawing room. I won't see her. Yes, you will, Claire. You will. Ah, hello, Mrs. Fothergill. Oh, hello, Doctor. How are you? Fine, fine. I do come in. Oh, I do hope I haven't chosen an awkward moment. You couldn't have come at a better time. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I, uh, I, I don't think you know my sister-in-law. The famous Dr. Joe. No, yeah. I don't. How are you? I was hoping I'd meet you. How are you? Sounds rather as though you've heard about my daughter. Heard of her? <laughs> Don't forget I come from Dockland. Her name's known to every sailor who ever put it at Lagos. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> oh, there I go again. <laughs> Honestly, though, Dr. Joe, we have both heard a lot about the job you did out there. Well, that was a marvellous sermon of your husband's last Sunday. Was it all right? Oh, very, oh. very good. Well, thank the Lord someone liked it. We quite thought he was well on the way to being on drop. Oh, oh, do you believe that? <laughs> Your church will be more packed next Sunday than it has been for 40 years. Do you really think so? Well, <laughs> I never thought we should end up competing with the Sunday papers. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. Will you go into the waiting room? Thank you. A patient. Oh, would you excuse me, Mrs. Fothergill? Well, of course, Doctor. Oh, I say, uh, do sit down, Mrs. I Fothergill. I can't stay long. I'm making bread and I expect it's rising. I suppose you've settled in the rectory now. Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. We're camping a little more comfortably. And how do you think your husband's going to like it here? He's beginning to adapt himself a bit. Of course, he sadly misses the pubs. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> the pubs? <laughs> yeah. Half his missionary work was done over a pint. And talking of missionaries, Dr. Joe, have you run across many in West Africa? Oh, any number. I've done a lot of work with them. You think they're doing a good job, then? Simply splendid. It, we couldn't possibly cover the ground without them. I am glad to hear that. I say, I would love you and Ned to meet. I'm sure you'd see eye to eye. I'm sure we should. Then, uh, can't it be managed? Of course, any time you say. I'm here for another ten days. Only ten days, oh dear. Oh, I do wish you hadn't got to shoot off so soon. It's always the way with people you like, isn't it? Well, I expect you're nearly as used to that as I am. Oh, dear, yes. Well, um... I must be going now. Oh, perhaps you'd see Mrs. Father Gill to the door, Father. Oh, I do more. I'll see her to her own door. She let me in. <laughs> that is nice of you. Well, I'll get my husband to ring you, Doctor. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Uh, don't be late for tea, Father. I say, do you like new bread? New bread? By golly, I haven't tasted that for years. <laughs> oh, dear, these cushions all rumpled. Claire, can't I do something? Why should you? You're on holiday. What's the matter? Matter? Claire, it's a pity you came back, isn't it? Came back? Why? You see what you've done, don't you? Done? Been going on for days now. I tried to tell myself I was only imagining it. 
Only small things at first, but coming one after another. Look, Claire, what's really on your mind? Jimmy. Oh, what about him? Oh, don't tell me you don't know. Look, what is all this about? You've got him following you around like a dog. He used to come to me for everything, but not anymore. Oh, no. It's Aunt Jo. Yes, but Claire... You fill his head with your, your stupid stories. To the next thing I know, he'll be stowing away on a ship. You thoroughly unsettled the boy. And father, too. Well, I never heard such nonsense. It was 40 years since he went to sea. And to hear him talk, you would think that was nothing but ships, ships. That's the effect you have on men, isn't it? To stir them up, make them think they're missing something in life. Look at Alan. I have never mentioned travel to Alan. No, you're too clever for that. You show him how you've outstripped him in his career. And he suddenly sees himself frustrated. Well, he's never said so to me. He doesn't need to. I can read him like a book, as I can father and my son. I may not have your technical knowledge, but I do know them, and I know what you've done to them. Till you came here, we were happy, all of us. Oh, I suppose by your standards, our world was a small one. But it contented us. We had each other. That was all we needed. Look, Claire, I'm not a stranger. There's no need for you to tell me all this. Why did you have to come back? Well, this is my home. Your home? What do you know about making a home? I'd like to know what would have happened to Father if I hadn't been here to look after him. Poor old man. Dad is not a poor old man. You only see one side of him, the side he wants you to see. I don't suppose you'd be looking quite so dashing if you'd had an old man to look after for years, or a boy to bring up. You don't know what it is to have a child. No. It's an experience I've missed. Look at us. You're only two years younger than I am. Look at my hair. Look at my hands. I've had to sew and mend and work and worry while you've been... Dashing about all over the place. Yes, thousands of miles of sleeplessness and air sickness. As for the places, they were mostly native villages stricken with the most horrible diseases. I thought you said your patients were sitting out under the past. So they were. And most of them were half blind. Oh. Well, you didn't say that at the time. No, of course I didn't. Anyway, that's only one side. You're meeting interesting people all the time. I've met some great and splendid people, yes. And I'm very proud of my profession. But a great deal of my work is is very horrible, and most of it is very sad. You've had plenty of compensation. I know. But when you close your eyes, it's not the bouquets at the airport, you see. It's the poor, sick, black faces. And now you think you'll come home. Suddenly you like it here. Yes, I love it. Every blade of green grass. You're greedy, Joe, you're greedy. You've had more in a week than most of us get in a lifetime. Stop, stop whining, Claire. Are you... You've got everything. Everything goes to make a happy life. And you're trying to take them away from me. What am I trying to take? Alan, Jimmy. The man I should have married and the son who might have been mine. You have never have been prepared to make the sacrifices I have. What sacrifices? No more than any woman makes when she marries. And in return, you've had protection and security and affection. You've never known what it was to be lonely or frightened. We get out of life what we put into it. I've loved them all. Yes, and what have you done to them with your love? Stifled them, coddled them, and made cowards of them. Oh, Dad, Dad on sufferance in his own home. Alan, afraid to launch out on his career because you are dependent on him. Jim, Jim at 12, beginning to worry about his health. They're all afraid of you, afraid of your tears and your martyrdom. Oh, no. Yes, you've been a good wife, Claire, a good daughter and a good mother. But God forgive you, you've devoted yourself to ruining the lives of three men. Oh, oh you don't know what you've done. I'm not strong. You'll be sorry. Claire, don't. You're trying to destroy my home. I don't ask much. Stop it, Claire. Oh, my poor little world that I've worked so hard to build. So this is what you do, is it? My God, I don't wonder you always win. Why don't you go? Why don't you go? This is Brandon 2-5. I want to send a cable. The Endemic Diseases Control Organization. Uh, uh, what time is it, Alan? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what did you say? The time. Oh, nearly ten past. Yeah. What time is Joe's car supposed to be arriving? 6.30. Uh, surgery time. Surgery time. So he's still in love with Joe. How long have you known? 
14, no, nearer 15 years. Probably before you did. Oh, no. I knew the moment I first set eyes on her across the operating theatre at King's. Pity all of it. With Joe, you might have amounted to something. You know, when I was a young man, I used to tell myself I'd do so many things. Joe's done them all. I shan't have much to leave my girl, but at least she's inherited the talents I wasted. I could have told you years ago that you'd picked the wrong one. Well, this isn't quite what you said at the time, is it? There's no need to tell me. I remember it distinctly, even without Claire's prompting. As it's Claire you've chosen, I shall be happy to take you into partnership. Well? Well, I ask you. A chap who hadn't got the guts to marry my Joe when he had the chance isn't fit for anything better than a partnership in a small country practice. Oh, God. And I was right, too. You hadn't any guts. You jibbed at marrying Joe because you were afraid she'd lead you a dance. Claire was different. Claire loved me. Of course she did. She worshipped you. Very flattering. So was the fact that she wasn't a patch on you intellectually. Admittedly, she gave you nothing to get your teeth into. And by the time you woke up, it was too late. To specialise? Yes. Well, how could I give up years to further study with a wife and child to think of? Other men seem to have managed. You had the gift. Alan, the hands, the intelligence, and the temperament of a great surgeon. When Joe first brought you here, you got the ambition to be one. And you, you, you go and throw it all away on a false step. I married Claire with my eyes open. Did you? Or was it because of her tears? Was it because she played on your pity, as some women play on your senses? She needed me. Claire needed you. The oldest chap in the world. And you, with your cold clinical brain, step right into it. Oh, dear, what's the good? Who am I to criticise? I went through much the same hoop myself. Claire's mother was a weak woman. They were always too strong for us. Well? Ready? Yes. Everything packed? Yes. Well, you weren't long. Oh, I can do these things in my sleep. Is Jim back from school? Oh, yes, over an hour ago. I thought he went up to you. No, I haven't seen him. Oh, perhaps he's doing prep in his room. Ah, oh, yes, I expect that's it. No sign of the car? No, it's not due for another ten minutes. What time does your plane leave? 8.30. No idea when you'll be back in England, Joe? None. I mean, uh... Will you go straight to Delhi from Bera? Uh, yes, yes. Funny, you never having struck Bera before. Not much of a place when I was there, but a lot can happen in 40 years. I shall be interested to hear your impressions. Uh, I'll write and tell you. This conference of yours, Joe, what, what's the main subject? Trachoma. Oh, really? That should be enormously interesting. Should it? Well, I imagine if you thought it worthwhile to... Are you quite sure it's worth my while? You know, as far as I'm concerned, this conference is just one more round in a losing battle. And you know as well as I do that Bear is about the last place on earth that I want to go to at present. Then what made you decide to... Oh, please, Alan. I don't have to tell you two what it's meant to me being at home, do I? The house where I was born. The only people I love in the world. Not to be among strangers. Joe. Joe, we, 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 we'll always be here whenever you need us. You know where to come. I know. Yes, only I... Something's happened. Yes. Do you want to tell us, Joe? I don't have to, do I? It's over, that's all. My holiday's at an end. Leave it at that. Once I'm away, the life of this house will go on just the same. Not quite the same, Joe. Well, I would like to believe that. I would like to believe that it hasn't all been a mistake, my coming home. If only I... If only I could think I'd opened one window. Alan. Alan, these four walls, they're not your world. There's so much outside. There's... So much to be done. You know that as well as I do. You knew it once. Don't lose sight of all that was in you. It's too late, it's Joe. not too late. There's Jim. There's your second chance, Alan. 
He's your hope for the future. And you're his, too. Only you can save him. You mustn't fail him, Alan. You mustn't. And you mustn't fail me this time. Ah, here you all are. You're ready in good time. Oh, considering the short notice. Oh, no doubt Joe's got quite a technique by now. Are you looking forward to the journey? Very much. It must be fun to go to all those exciting places at someone else's expense. It's great fun. I expect to be entertained by the Sultan. Oh, that's Zanzibar, not Bera. Oh, well, all the same. I should never be surprised to see Joe end up in a harem. <laughs> we shall miss her, shan't we? It's made quite a break in our quiet lives. A breath from another world. I do hope you're feeling better for the rest, Joe. I must say you look splendid, doesn't she, darling? What a marvellous coat that is. Oh, don't tell me you've got that in Africa. Hmm, must be nice to spend all one's money on oneself. It's rather different when you've got a family to think of. Still, wouldn't do for everyone to live in others, would it? I mean, it takes all sorts to make a world, doesn't it? Oh, Claire, for God's sake. Of course, in a career like Joe's, uh, dealing with men all the time, uh, an attractive appearance is half the battle. Well, uh, I don't know why we're all standing here like this. Why don't we have a drink? I'm sure Joe would like one. One for the road, as they say. Alan, get the sherry, darling. Uh, please, no, no, I haven't time. I do hope your car isn't going to be late. Uh, does the driver know the best route? They're sending the same man who drove me down. From headquarters? Oh, how grand we are. Does Jim know I'm leaving? Does he know what time I'm going? Did, did you tell him, Claire? I was just wondering why he hadn't come down. I haven't seen the boy since he came in. Give him a shout, Alan. Uh, it's nearly half hour. Uh, no, wait, Alan. Do you think about it better if I went upstairs and said goodbye to him quietly? I think that's a good idea, Joe. Call for the this sounds like your car. Good evening, sir. Dr. Marlowe's car. Good. There's flowers for her? Yes, sir. Uh, come along in. Thank you, sir. Good evening, madam. Uh, good evening. I was to give you these with the compliments of the Secretary General. He regrets he won't be able to see you off at the airport, but wishes you bon voyage. Well, that was very nice of him. I'll send him a wire from Heathrow. Oh, they are lovely. How are we for time, Roberts? As soon as you're ready, madam. Any other delegates going on plane? Uh, Dr. Nagamba of Nigeria and a medical missionary from Uganda. Good, we shall be able to compare notes before the conference opens. Is that all the luggage that's to go, the cases in the hall? Uh, yes, I don't think you'll find there's any excess to pay. Joe, Joe, where are you? In here, Jim. You're going away. Yes, dear. She didn't tell me. She oh. didn't tell me. I saw your car drive up and the bag's in the hall. Uh, Roberts, just take out the luggage and wait for me, will you? Yes, madam, I'll be putting them in the car. Oh, Joe, Joe! Oh, Jim, what's the matter? She stuck me up there doing homework and never said you were going away. What? Is this true, Claire? Certainly. For God's sake, why? Surely you can see. Look at him. Look at the state he's in. Do you wonder when you lied to him? Claire, how could you? You don't know him as I do. I was going to break it to him gently. Yes, when it was too late for me to say goodbye to him. I was afraid he'd make a scene with you. Mother wanted to stop me seeing you, Joe. Only for your sake, darling. You know how easily you get upset. You're such a highly strung boy. Highly strung at his age. She was afraid I'd go off with Aunt Joe. Now, Jim. <gasps> and so I would, anywhere, you said. I will, too, as soon as I'm old Jim, enough. Jim, Jim, you mustn't say things like that. I'll find out where you are and stow on a ship. You see what you've done? Alan, do you see? She's taken our son away from us. Yeah, kids don't mean these things. I do, I mean every word. Oh, quiet, Jim, you don't know what you're saying. I do, she's horrible, horrible. Take me with you, Joe. I won't be a bother, I promise. Please, I do love you, Joe. Now, now, <laughs> darling, darling, you mustn't cry. I can't take. Oh, you know that. Why not? Why not, Aunt Jo? Tell me. Your father needs you. Is that right, Dad? Yes, Jim. That's right. The luggage is all on the car, madam, if you're ready. Yes, I'm quite ready. I'm sorry to hurry you, madam, but I don't want to run it too close. Of course not. Where are you going, Joe? Bearer. Have you been there before? No. Then you'll be frightened again, won't you? Shh. That's a secret. Between us? Between the two of us. Okay, Joe. And now, Jim, have, would you like to go out to the car and see that all my bags are safely on board? Yes, Joe. Well, goodbye, Alan. I'll see you to the car. No. And no waving through the window. 
Does, does that go for me too, Joe? Yes. Goodbye, Claire. Goodbye. Our hearts go with you, Joe. <sighs> well, that's that. You might have known it was too good to last, Joe settling down. Let well alone, Claire. <sighs> Time I was in the surgery. Mind your ash on the carpet, Alan. This is Dr. Beresford's house. Uh, no, I'm sorry, doctor's not in at the moment. This is Mrs. Beresford. Yes, I'll give him a message as soon as he comes in. In Dr. Joe by Joan Morgan, the cast was as follows. Joanna Marlowe, Frida Jackson. Claire Beresford, Joan Scott. Jim Beresford, Hugh Janes. Dr. Alan Beresford, Ivan Brandt. Mrs. Fothergill, Gladys Young. Roberts, Barry Fletcher. Mrs. Barnes, Vera Ash. Radio interviewer, Leslie Dunn. Dr. Marlowe was played by the late Laidman Brown. The recorded production was by Hugh Stewart in the BBC's Midland Studios. That was a recorded repeat of the programme heard last Saturday evening in the home service. It was the Larghetto in A major by the 18th century Italian composer Pietro Nardini. It was played by Nathan Milstein, violin, with Leon Pommer's piano. The next part of the home service follows in half a minute.